Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where we have to know the answer to this question. Also known as Batman the Movie, was made by Ocean and released in 1989 to coincide with the Tim Burton movie Batman. And as you might have guessed, it was a tie-in game for the film. The version I have here is for the Amiga. And more than that, it was the packed-in version for possibly the most important Amiga bundle ever. The Batman Pack. Which can't be understated at how important this was. With the world going crazy for Batman at the time, Commodore managed to get the most popular property around as their pack-in title. Which resulted in over 180,000 Amiga 500s to be sold. And cemented the Amiga as the machine to own. But the question is, is the game good enough to warrant that sort of impact? Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but first we'll have to check out the contents of the box. And this being a packed in title, it is a very basic box. It didn't really need to advertise itself as you'd already gotten it. The original boxes were far more detailed, with a lot more on the back, though you are far more likely to find this box or the Hit Squad version, which is what I bought back in the day. Inside the box we find the game on two floppy disks, which actually means it's one of the earlier releases, as the team went back and managed to compress the game even more, which resulted in a single floppy disk version that was used in the later bundles and the budget releases. And as we can see with the discs, it actually calls itself Batman the Movie, which we'll also see in one of the menus, but most of the branding it is just simply Batman. Next up is the manual, which is just this fold-out style that has details on both the Amiga and the Atari ST version. It has all the controls for the various levels, as well as overviews and hints on how to finish each one. They managed to fit a surprising amount of detail in here. And last but not least is the Batman sticker. So let's boot this up shall we? Which greets us with a cool loading screen and the funky music you've been hearing in the background. And this is where we find the second reference to it being called Batman the Movie. Not in the big logo, but in the text in one of the credits. And with no real options to speak of, let's just go straight into the game. Which doesn't mess around by the way. Right away you have a bunch of baddies ready to shoot at you. This is really just setting your expectations, as the rest of the level doesn't mess around either. And as you might have guessed so far, this is a side-scrolling platform. Or at least this level is and you can throw your batarangs to take out various baddies, but the party piece is using the grapple. This allows you to get to higher platforms and even swing around. You can either throw it straight up or at 45 degree angles, so you can't throw it down. And if you're really good, you can actually use it to take out baddies on other floors. Now there are two main enemies that you will face. There is the gun toting lot that comes in two different colours, but as far as I can tell they're exactly the same. They can shoot you from a few various angles, and we'll try and walk around to get to our hero, which means they'll climb up and down ladders they come across, which is great as while they're on a ladder they can't attack. But the one that will really wreck your day are the ones in green. These little gits will throw bombs. And they can be very good at it as well. Not only will they try and hit you from off the screen, but they also have quite the throwing arm and they will be particularly difficult to avoid when you're trying to grapple up to a platform that they're patrolling. And if just having to stumble across this lot wasn't bad enough, they also like to spawn in more after you hit certain points as well. And as you go around the level, you'll also have to avoid various acid drips, as well as gas sprays. OSHA would really not give this place high marks, that's for sure. The level itself is actually a bit of a maze, with sections that will loop back around on themselves and a few dead ends so you really need to learn the map to work out what the best route is to take. And eventually you'll meet up with Jack, and a swift batarang will take him down, down, down into the acid. Which leads us on to the next level, the car chase. 
and as you can see this is one of the earlier examples of doing a film time with multiple different game styles to retell the movie. And it really locked in the formula that Ocean would use for multiple games in the future. And for a tie-in game, this is a surprisingly smooth and fast racing system. It's better than some of the actual racing games that were released later. But the goal here is to drive for 100. I'm not sure if that's miles or kilometres or just general units, but that's the goal. All while trying to avoid the traffic on the road, as well as Joker's vans as well. And every so often you'll be given a direction prompt. You'll need to try and get the car over to that side of the road and then let loose the back grapple that will swing you around and let you continue. Just like in the film. And if you miss too many of these in a row, you'll end up running into a roadblock. The biggest blocker to actually finishing this level is bouncing off the obstacles at the side of the road, as these seem to deal far more damage than anything else. And you can tell how much life you've got left by looking at the portrait of Batman in the HUD. The more you get hurt, the more this picture will transform into the Joker. And it does look quite creepy when it's half full. And like all of the other levels, this one is also timed, so you need to be quick if you want to try and finish it in a single go. Now I'm not too proud to say that the first level is a real killer. You have just three lives to finish it, and it has a single checkpoint in the middle to restart from. But once you get past that, the next three levels are relatively easy and actually quite fun. I hate to think how many people never got to see most of the content of this game because of that first level. And I think the budget label Hit Squad knew that as well as they actually included inside the box a little envelope that had a card that told you the cheat code. Type in JAM into the title screen and it will flip and at that point you'll have unlimited lives and you can skip levels by hitting the F10 key. And yes, I used it quite often back in the day if just to get to my favourite level, the Batcave. Which is this fun little puzzle game in which you have these 8 items and you have to work out which three, when combined, creates the evil Smile X. And you have a limited number of tries, and even more limited time, so you have to be very quick. This plays out like a mini version of Mastermind, as you have to pick three objects, and it'll tell you how many you've got right. In this case, the order doesn't matter, it's just the right combination. So you have to try different combos, which will help you narrow it down to which ones you think are correct. Now there's not much this level, but I really like puzzle games, so this was one I like to return to. Unsurprisingly, this game was also released for multiple home computers, and you can think of them as being split into two main groups, the 8 bits and the 16 bits. The 8 bits included the Amstrads, the C64, the ZX Spectrum, but it still follows the same basic gameplay styles as the Amiga but the level layouts have been tweaked a little to make it different. And the car chase is now this side-on deal rather than into the screen, but the basic gameplay is still the same. The other 16-bit versions includes the Atari ST and MS-DOS. Now the Atari version got some nice in-between level screens. I'm not sure if they just had some extra time to add them in, or if they had more space due to not using the sampled music. Overall it actually looks quite close to the Amiga version. And significantly better than the MS-DOS version. With level 4 we return to the road, well in this case the sky, with the Batwing, and it's using the same road drawing system as level 2. This time you have to fly around the screen and try and cut the ropes of the various balloons, but you have to be careful not to pop the balloons themselves or fly into the floats that's at the bottom, as you'll do damage to the Batwing. You can control the speed by holding down the fire button and pushing forward or back, but you will lose speed if you hit anything. You are still timed and have health, so you have to be quick, but also you have to be precise with your movement, as you have the goal of trying to take down a hundred of those balloons.
Now I do have to say it's actually quite a nice touch that the Batwing gets more damage as you take more hits. Those flames coming off it look quite neat. And as with almost all the other levels, there's also mid-stage checkpoints. With the driving and flying levels, that means putting you back to the halfway point with your target. Either 50 miles or 50 balloons. The platforming levels are a bit similar, but they have a single checkpoint about halfway through the level itself, which means it can be quite a pain trying to retread those same bits again and again as you try to push forward. But thankfully, it does reset your health and gives you a bit more time, so it's not too bad. Although you only have three lives and I'm not even sure you can earn any more. There's no mention of it in the manual anywhere, so you have to try and keep as many lives as possible as you enter in the final level. Which is the Cathedral, which returns us to the platforming section again. And this one is just as hard as the first level, and with the same type of baddies as before, though you now do get rats. And these things can't be hit, so you have to just avoid them instead. Now, as you can imagine, there aren't many leaking pipes or gusts of steam in the church. Instead, it has floors that will give way, and spike traps instead. And you'll need to get used to using the grapple, as it's used far more to swing over pits, or to just try and get to other parts of the level. Amazingly, for such an early Amiga game, it actually has both music and sound effects at the same time, as well as quite the range of tunes. But one of the more annoying parts of this level is you can't always avoid taking the stairs, as they are really slow to climb and you can't attack while doing so which means where you can, you should try grappling up instead. You should also keep that grapple handy, as the very last thing you need to do is grapple the Joker while he's trying to get away. Miss him and well, damn it, you have to start from the checkpoint all over again. So, was this a great game? Possibly not. It is a fun little title that managed to recreate parts of the film, and each section was quite interesting. So it's not a bad game either. With the first and last levels being overly difficult because the rest of the game is a little short being the biggest issue, but it was quite an early title for the machine being released in 89, and it helped pave the way for what would come in the next few years for the hardware, which is actually even reflected in the review scores, with initial reviews being between 80 to 90%, and then the later re releases being a bit lower. I have to say I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with this game, as I do keep coming back to it even though, well, it's rare that I make it past the first level, so I'd love to hear what you thought about it. Did you manage it or did you have to jam your way through it? So until next time, I was the Batfish, I mean I was the Goldfish, that was the Dark Knight, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can let me know down in the comments or you can use those buttons just below, you know the ones I mean. Or if you're not sure yet, then you can check out two other videos that I've done that are on the screen right now. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.